Let's face it, there are many useless things you could buy for $89 nowadays, and that's 75 euros for my European friendly friends. Um, I for one, I'm definitely guilty of having purchased such things in the past. So when I saw on Gearbest that there was a 3D printer for $89, I just had to buy it and try it out. The question is, does it actually work? Is it worth the $89? And most importantly, is it worthy of being called a 3D printer? I guess you should stick around to find out, but most importantly, keep an open mind for this video. The box the 3D printer comes in is quite small and well packed. Inside you will find a sample roll of filament, power cable, USB adapter and a micro SD card which has all the instruction on it and a sample print. It also contains a couple of long screws and nuts, a screwdriver and a tiny spool holder. The printer itself comes in three pieces. It's all wired up from the get-go, consisting of the base with a removable magnetic build plate, the gantry and the control box. You will also find a power brick and a USB cable. The assembly process consists of running the only unplugged cable through a hole, sliding the gantry in place, tightening two long screws with nuts to secure it in place, and connecting the Z-axis stepper motor. After the assembly, the first thing I noticed was that the bed was wobbly, so I took apart the build plate, tightened all the screws, securing the bearings in place, uh, reassembled everything, and it was good to go. The control box has four buttons. A home button, which only homes the Z-axis for some reason. It has a minus and a plus, which control the load and unload function of the filament. And the play button, which acts as a start and pause for the print. Pressing the plus sign will start heating the hot end. Now, while heating, it will start flashing rapidly. Once it reaches the set temperature, the flashing will slow down and the extruder starts pushing filament through. Having done that, I decided, okay, I'm going to put the SD card in and press play. To my surprise, it actually started printing. Um, much better than I expected, to be completely honest. Having experienced the 101 Hero a few years back, I was not expecting anything at all. Um, to be honest, I wasn't even expecting to do this video, but I was very pleasantly surprised. The micro SD card had a CAT sample print, uh, which actually completed. Now at this point, I was just impressed that it started the print, let alone finished it. And I wasn't really looking for good quality prints, especially for the fact that it doesn't have a part cooling fan, but it actually printed quite well. Now the downside of not having a part cooling fan is obviously visible on the overhangs of the print. Now, when you throw a file on the SD card, you just put it in the main directory as G code, put it in the printer, press play, and the printer knows what to do. Once again, it printed, and haven't been able to play around with the settings, the print started looking much better. Now, if you have made it this far, you're intrigued as I was about this printer, because at $89, this was shaping up to be a fun little machine. Well, just like this channel, you know, so you might as well go ahead and click subscribe. It's, it's a new year. Make it your resolution. Now that I was getting a bit comfortable with the machine, I wanted to find a way to put on a part cooling fan. Just for my curiosity, I wanted to see what the prints would look like with a part cooling fan. I opened the control box to have a look and was surprised to see that it looks like a decent mainboard actually. I initially thought it was a Big Tree Tech board due to the BTT sign, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, however, I do know that the board is actually used on the larger Easy 3D uh, printers because this one is like a scaled down version. In fact, it has a place for a Wi-Fi expansion, but most importantly, it had a connector for the part cooling fan. So I grabbed the 12 volt fan, some tape wire, and I MacGyvered the fan on the hot end, uh, just, just, you know, as long as it's stuck there. I connected the wires to the board and sliced the Pikachu. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna put this up against the Ender 3 or say it's as good um, because it's not. So, you know, hold your horses there before you start bashing me in the comments. But keep in mind that this is an $89 3D printer that works. Not only it works, it actually works very well. The print quality with a part cooling fan turned out so much better than I expected. Now, no, it's not perfect. But it's once again, it's $89. I have used far more expensive printers that produced much worse quality than this, which is why I then decided to throw in a 12 hour print uh, by Kijai. The printing speed is no more than 30 millimeters a second here, so it will be slow, which is expected as the structure of the printer and the components don't cater for higher speeds. 
At the same time, it was also a bit of a stress test to see how it copes on longer prints. The result was once again impressive. Granted, the profiles of the slicer require a bit more work, even more so than normal because, you know, the way the stepper motor works and the way the hot end is, um, but it can get there. So my next task at some point will be to design a clip-on fan shroud that can be printed on the machine um, because if anyone decides to buy this, I think it would be great addition. At this point, I decided to start tearing the machine apart because I wanted to see more of it. The extruder itself is not a 3D printing pen setup, as was the case for the 101 Hero. But it's, it's a step above a 3D pen and a step below a normal 3D printer, so it's somewhere in between, which I'm guessing is to reduce the cost um, and remain effective. Now, at this point, I decided I actually really like this printer. And before releasing this video, I had to test Thermo Runaway, which I think is very important. This printer could definitely be aimed toward kids or the younger generation, so safety has to be paramount. I started the process of unloading filament and took my Seek Thermal camera out to see what is happening. Once the temperature reached its target and the motor started turning, I unplugged the thermistor cable to replicate a fault. Now instantly, the temperature of the hot end started plummeting, which means the printer has some sort of safety feature which cuts power to the hot end when the thermistor is not reading the temperature correctly. This is a good thing. It also stopped the extruder from turning. Once the thermistor is plugged back in, the temperature climbs back up and the motor starts turning again. Now, if the thermistor is unplugged during a print or a fault happens, the hot end once again cools down, extruder stops turning, but the printer continues its printing movement without actually extruding. Now, while this could be done better, I'm happy to see that some adequate safety features are present. Now, when I ordered this printer, I honestly didn't think I was going to release a video on it. I, I record everything that I unbox in here. Most of the footage ends up in the trash because it's projects that I never get to fulfill. But I thought this won't make the cut. Um, but to be completely honest, I was impressed and I really liked this machine. I tweeted photos about the prints I did and it really grew on me. Now you might say for a bit more, I could get the Ender 3 and you'd be very right, but not everyone can afford it. At the end of the day, not everyone wants to spend over $100 on a gift or can afford to spend over $100 on a 3D printer. And this machine opens up the possibilities for those who want to get their feet wet in 3D printing. Yes, they will outgrow it in a matter of weeks, if not days, but it gets them started. And that's the most important thing. If you want to give this to your kids, you just slice a model for them, put it on the SD card, give it to them. All they have to do is just insert the card and press play. Now, two years ago, when I got the 101 Hero, I got that for over a hundred dollars. This machine blows it out the water and it's cheaper. So I wholeheartedly approve. Like this gets me actually very excited for the future because can you imagine in a year's time um, what we'll be able to get in terms of 3D printing capabilities for this price? At the end of the day, it's another market segment that can be filled and can further grow the community. That is it for me today, guys. That is the first episode of the year. I hope it was worth it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave a link in the video description to Press Reset's um, first impressions video of this machine as well, just in case you're interested and want more information from a different perspective. I will leave links in the video description as well to the machine if you want to find out more about it. As always, questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.